Hi friends, welcome to Dragon Storytime. I'm Miss Megan. Today we're going to share Attack of the Underwear Dragon written by Scott Rothman. We're sharing this with permission from Random House. <clears throat> Cole had always wished he could be an assistant knight to Sir Percival, his favorite knight of King Arthur's round table. So Cole wrote him a letter. Dear Sir Percival, I would make a great assistant knight because I am smart. I work hard and whatever I don't know, I promise to learn. Please give me a shot. Love, Cole. Sir Percival read Cole's letter and cried. That's right, knights cry. Knights cry at sad plays and bad plays. When they step on something sharp or run into a harp. When they cut onions or get bunions. When they get stuck on castle ceilings or when wizards hurt their feelings. But Sir Percival cried because he had once written a letter to his favorite knight, Sir Lancelot, who had given him a shot. So Sir Percival made Cole his assistant knight. Cole had a lot to learn. He learned how to sharpen Sir Percival's swords spears, battle axes, and knight pencils. He learned how to ride a horse and swing a sword, how to paint Sir Percival's doing an awesome knight poses, and calm Sir Percival when he awoke from nightmares about a big, scary underwear dragon. Cole learned how to get knocked off a horse, knocked down by a knight, knocked over by a princess, and knocked out by a catapult. At battle time, Cole learned how to pack Sir Percival's stuff, lug it up to battle, cheer for Sir Percival when the battle began, and bandage his boo-boos when it was all over. Cole loved learning what made Sir Percival a great knight, even if Sir Percival was terrified of an underwear dragon and that would, he would come and destroy the kingdom. Unfortunately, an underwear dragon came and destroyed the kingdom. All the knights fought the underwear dragon and all the knights lost. Pretty soon there was only one knight left. Pretty soon there were no knights left. So, Cole wrote another letter. Dear Underwear Dragon, I am only an assistant knight of the round table, but I think you should clean up the mess you made because it's not nice to mess up a kingdom that does not belong to you. I can help if you want. Love, Cole. The Underwear Dragon got Cole's letter and ate it. Hum. Well, that's right. Underwear dragons can't read. Underwear dragons can't read letters, gestures, sweaters, billboard signs for Gil's swords, party invitations, poems about crustaceans, royal decrees, bath oil recipes, moat signs, goat kinds, menus, words with 10 U's, or even maps that medieval hens use. The underwear dragon went to eat coal next. When Coal saw the underwear dragon, he was scared. And when the underwear dragon attacked, Coal didn't think he would be able to do anything. But then Cole remembered everything he learned from being an assistant knight and fought and jousted and wrestled and catapulted the underwear dragon until its underwear flew off. And so did the dragon. The whole kingdom cheered and helped clean Cole clean up the mess that the underwear dragon had made. Thank you, Cole. Back at the castle, King Arthur made Cole a knight 
and gave him a place at the round table. But Sir Cole just wanted to get some rest because tomorrow he needed to find his own assistant knight of the round table. He received the Golden Underwear Award. The end. Okay, so now we are going to do a little rhyme called Five Little Dragons. Can you hold up your five fingers and help me count these dragons? One, two, three, four, five. Five little dragons went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother Dragon said, it's time for your snack, but only four little dragons came roaring back. Four little dragons went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama Dragon said, it's time for your snack, and only three little dragons came roaring back. Three little dragons went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother Dragon said, it's time for your snack, but only two little dragons came roaring back. Two little dragons went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother Dragon said, it's time for your snack, but only one little dragon came roaring back. One little dragon went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother Dragon said, it's time for your snack, but no little dragons came running back. Mother Dragon said, it's a really good snack. And one, two, three, four, five little dragons came roaring back. Okay, our last story we're gonna share is called Fergal and the Bad Temper, written by Robert Starling. We're reading this with permission from Imprint Publishing. This is Fergal. What a nice dragon. He's a friendly little fellow, but when someone tells him what to do, Fergal gets very angry. Like when his dad says, Fergal, come down for your dinner. But Fergal wanted to keep playing. And then he said, Fergal had to eat all of his vegetables if he wanted dessert. Fergal felt fiery. It's not fair. I don't want to eat my greens. So Fergal didn't get any dessert and he didn't get any dinner either. Fergal got in a pickle on the soccer field. Your goalkeeper. It's not fair, said Fergal. I don't want to be the goalkeeper. His fiery temper got Fergal in trouble all over town. You have to wait for them to cool, Fergal. Foof. You have to miss a turn, Fergal. Scroof. Wherever he went, Fergal just couldn't keep his cool. Finally, his friends had had enough. Everyone's ignoring me, Mom, said Fergal. It's not fair. Well, Fergal, dinner's in the trash, Bear's pastries are burned, and no one can play soccer, and that's not fair. We all get fiery, sighed Mom, but we find a way to cool down. My trick is to count to ten. The next day, Fergal felt fiery again. That's not but then he remembered his mom's trick. One, two, three, four, five. <sighs> and he didn't feel so fiery. It had worked. Fergal noticed lots of animals had their own way to cool down. When Crow felt fiery, he told his friends about it. When Fox felt fiery, he watched the sunset. Wolf always found a nice quiet spot and made a lot of noise, big noise. Ow! Cat lay back and had a really good stretch. And then there was Hare. Whizzing about stopped her feeling fiery in the first place. 
Now, Fergal had lots of ways to cool down. And when he didn't waste his fire on being angry, he found that there were much more interesting things to do with it. The end. Okay, so now we're gonna make our dragon puppet. So when he's done, he's gonna look like this. And you can blow his fire. So you're gonna get a bag and in your baggie is going to be two large pom-poms, two small pom-poms, half of a paper towel holder, a yellow construction paper square, some eyes, and your fiery strips. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the yellow piece of construction paper and you're gonna roll it like this. And the best thing is to get tape and then just kind of tape it. It works better than the glue. For the other things, you will need a glue stick. Then we're gonna take your fiery strips Take them out of here. And your glue stick. You could put a little bit of glue on the end like that. And you're just gonna stick it right inside like that so it'll stick out. Do that to all of the strips that you have. You can just put them all around the tube however you want. Like that. Add this one. Another one. You put them all around the outside, then when you blow your fire, it'll really move. Okay, so all those are on and it looks like that. Next, we're gonna do his little nostrils, balls, pom-poms. So you're gonna glob your glue really good so that it sticks on there. And then you're gonna stick it right on the end like that, spread them out. Next, you're gonna use your large pom-poms. Really glob your glue on good. Before you actually put it on though, you can use your eyes and you're gonna stick those eyes, one eye right on that pom-pom like that. The eyes take a little bit more time on the pom-pom to dry. You take this one, same thing, add your eye on that, a little more glue. It's got some crazy eyes. I'm gonna put that aside and let it dry. And there you go. You have your little dragon puppet. Okay, hope to see you guys soon. Take care, bye.